Let's talk about Rutherford scattering. The setup is a part fixed particle with charge Q2. It's impacted by the charged particle Q1 uh, with charge Q1 at, with a mass of m with velocity v0. The definition of impact parameter can be defined as uh, a line that is parallel to v0 go across the fixed particle. And uh, those two parallel lines, uh, this distance between those power, two parallel lines can be defined as b, impact parameter. We can use the impact parameter to study the angular momentum which is conserved in this system. The, coor uh, the coordinate uh, is used, we're using the polar coordinate to describe the location, uh, r and theta. At the beginning, we called a theta i. At the final stage of the scattering, we call it theta infinity. That angle is called deflection angle, pretty much is after the scattering, how much angle the angle has changed for Q1. Uh, the force is Coulomb force and is only depend on, uh, is only have radial component, therefore we can use Bennett equation. Bennett equation is pretty much uh, an equation of motion for the, for the force that is only have radial component. Uh, the detailed derivation has a, a, another videos, I will put the link in the description. And we basically equate this exp equ expression with this equation, and we're left with such expression, equation, and we tied it up, left with second order differential equation. We put uh, H, which is defined as angular momentum divided by M, so it's V for us, it's V naught B, and we we'll plug this into here. Remember the u is 1 over r. So we're left with this, this nice neat second order differential equation. We define this quantity as kappa. Kappa is only dependent on the initial, initial condition v0 and b, the initial velocity and impact parameter. And the, the, the solution to such differential equation can be, can be that, the con can be this. And the one way to, of course, verify it is just to plug this expression into the second order differential equation. You will find that, in fact, is a solution. And uh, we need to constrain, we need to solve for state, uh, state and not and u not and state and not. Uh, so we need two boundary conditions to constrain that. So we need to look into the, the expression itself as first order, uh, first order derivative. Uh, at uh, initial condition, basically before the collision, or r equals infinity uh, before the collision. So we have r equals infinity i state i theta i equals to pi u equals one over r and uh, r equals basically uh, b over sine theta. So you know that pretty much this is this triangle. This is r. This is b, this is theta, so it's pretty much b equals r over sine theta. Then u u, u equals one over r, so u equals sine uh, sine theta over b. Uh, we plug the initial condition in u equals sine theta over b theta equals pi. We have this expression. Since since this on the right hand side both quantities are finite and theta is close to pi, therefore it's close to zero, therefore, so we can make this go to zero, then, then we have kappa equals negative, negative u naught cosine theta naught, since a cosine pi minus theta naught equals theta naught, a sine cosine theta naught. Then we have one constraint, and uh, we, do the derivative of u, first order derivative of u, using the solution. Using the solution, we have negative u naught sine theta minus theta naught. We use at the at the at the beginning of the collision, we have u equals sine theta over b. 
then we do the derivative of that expression. We have cosine theta over b. We equate those two equations left with this expression. Since cosine pi equals negative 1, sine pi minus theta naught equals sine theta naught, then we're left with this expression. So we have two constraints marked here. We can solve, solve finally for theta naught. We divide, we pretty much divide those two equations, equation one divided by equation two. We have kappa b equals negative co, uh, cotangent theta naught. Since negative tangent theta equals tangent negative theta, and the cotangent theta naught equals tangent pi over two minus theta naught. We ha then we have theta naught. We have theta naught equals pi over two plus arctangent kappa b. We basically take arctangent on both sides. Then at final stage, as r equal to infinity, on the, on the right-hand side, pretty much, at, we are trying to calculate deflection angle, which is a, pretty much a final goal. Um, we have, similar to the first boundary condition, and we are foreshadowing <laughs> 0 equals u naught cosine theta infinity minus theta naught minus kappa. Um, so we know that kappa equals negative u naught cosine theta naught, and uh, negative cosine theta naught can be equal to cosine pi plus theta naught. Then we have we equate this. Uh, sorry, we equate this with this, and kappa equals kappa. Then we have u naught cosine pi plus theta naught. This expression, and the u naught cancels out, we have theta infinity equals pi plus 2 theta naught. And we can plug theta naught expression here into this expression. Then we're left with 2 pi plus 2 arctangent kappa beta, uh, sorry, kappa b. Since theta infinity has to ranging from 0 to pi, we we're left with this expression, 2 arctangents to our tangent kappa b. So therefore that's the final, and we plug in the kappa into here, then we're left with this expression. Pretty much this is a deflection angle, only depend on the charge, mass, velocity, and impact parameter. And uh, we can do the do the ta tangent on both sides and do the expression. This is, we need 4 pi epsilon naught here. For the SI unit, this is, this, by the way, is a Gaussian unit. Pretty much it doesn't have 2 pi epsilon. Um, so we do the, these, uh, we do the cross section we do d, sig, uh, d sigma or d omega. Uh, sigma is a, is a cross section, and uh, omega is a solid angle. I will talk maybe in a different video about this. So it can, uh, the cross section can be expressed in terms of b, 2 pi b db. A angular solid angle can be expressed 2 pi sine theta d theta. And we can, we know that we we'll do the d d b d theta since this is only part that is def dependent on theta. Then we know d theta over two. Do the do the derivative one over two, uh, half sec squared theta over two. We know the trick identity sine theta equals two sine theta over two cosine theta over two. Plug everything in in here. We we'll left with this neat expression. And this is very useful. Those two red square are the expression that will be useful in the future study of Rutherford scattering. And that's about it.